Okay, and so now we finally get to the point where we've built up enough algebraic tools to be able to solve cubic equations. All the techniques um, that we've built up here um, that are useful in solving cubic equations, they also apply to all higher degree polynomials. Um, it's just a bit more tedious. So if you're trying to factorise a quartic function, for example, you use the factor theorem to find one factor, you do long division, and then you have a linear times a cubic, and then you just need to do the same thing again. Use the factor theorem for the cubic to find another factor, do long division until you've got linear times linear times quadratic, and then you can factorise the quadratic. So processes are the same, you just have to do um, the steps more than once. Um, so we don't really go much beyond cubic functions, the occasional quartic, um, but not really, not really a quartic, which would require you to do two lots of long division. Okay, so let's just focus on solving cubic equations for now. Um, and essentially the solution of a cubic equation is the same as that for quadratics. And that is, if we can solve it by rearrangement, we will. And by that I mean just doing the same, if you can just do the same thing to both sides until you get x on its own. And that's going to be possible if you only have one x in the equation. Something as simple as x cubed equals 27. We don't need any fancy techniques to do that. We take the cube root of both sides and we're done. Something as simple as x cubed minus 5 equals under 11. We add 5 to both sides and we take the cube root. Something as simple as x minus 2 all cubed equals 17. We take the cube root, we add 2. Something as simple as 2 times x minus 1 all cubed plus 5 equals 0. Take away 5, divide by 2, take the cube root, add 1. Okay. So if we can solve it by rearrangement, that is if there is only 1x in the equation, so we can just do the same thing to both sides until we get that x on its own, we absolutely want to do that. Let's not overcomplicate things. However, if we can't do that, then we want to rearrange to make one side 0, we want to divide both sides by any numeric common factor. So if there is a um, highest common factor that's a number, we can divide it away if we have um, the one side equal to zero. And then we want to factorise, bearing in mind that our first step in our factorisation process is to take out any common factors first. Um, and then we want to use the null factor law to solve. So the null factor law for quadratics, we talk about, well, if a times b equals zero, that means that either a equals zero or b equals zero. And that extends to cubics and higher degree polynomials because if a times b times c equals 0, then either a has to be 0 or b has to be 0 or c has to be 0. Okay. So the null factor law applies no matter how many things you're multiplying together. If any number of things are multiplying together to equal 0, one or more of those things must equal 0. Okay, let's go through some examples. So example 1, um, we're solving this cubic equation. All right, so the first thing I'm identifying is I'm not going to be able to solve this by rearrangement. There is more than one x in the equation. They're not like terms. They can't be collected together. So absolutely not. So then I'm going to make one side 0, which is already done for me in this instance. I'm going to divide both sides by any numeric common factors. So there's no numbers in common um, between 3, 4, 13, and 6. So nothing to be done there. And then we want to factorise. Now we've spent the last few videos factorising cubics, so we need to first of all identify a factor. So I'm going to be using my factor theorem, trial and error, knowing that I'm looking for only factors of 6. Um, so subbing in 1 to start with gives me 3 minus 4 minus 13 minus 6. So that's not 0. P of negative 1 would be negative 3 minus 4 plus 13 minus 6. Uh, that looks good, I think. That's going to be 0. Okay, so that tells us that x plus 1 is a factor. Okay, so then we need to divide. Whether we use synthetic division or another process, I use long division. I'm going to divide x plus 1 into my polynomial to find the other factors. 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 13x minus 6. Once again, hopefully we're pretty efficient at this now. I'm just going to whiz through it. You can go back and watch some other videos to see how it's done. So I looked for what do I multiply x by to get 3x cubed, and that's 3x squared. I'm now multiplying, sorry, not concentrating. And then I'll subtract. So negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7x squared. Bring down my next term and repeat the process again. What do I need to multiply x by to get negative 7x squared? So that'll be negative 7x. Multiplying negative 7x squared minus 7x and subtracting negative 13 minus minus 7 is negative 13 plus 7. 
which is negative 6. And then finally, what do I have to multiply x by to get negative 6x, negative 6? And this is all looking good to confirm that it is indeed a factor. Okay, so now our equation was here. Now we know that that equation is the same as x plus 1 times 3x squared minus 7x minus 6 equals 0. So we have a harder quadratic to factorise. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. Again, you can go back to older videos to see how to factorise quadratics. Factors of negative 18 that add up to negative 7, it's going to be negative 9 and positive 2. So I'm going to rewrite the middle term using minus 9x and plus 2x. So we're going to have x plus 1, 3x squared minus 9x plus 2x minus 6 equals 0. And then we factorise by grouping. So x plus 1 is still here. 3x is common to the first two terms. Um, it leaves us with x minus 3. And in the second two terms, 2 is common, and it leaves us with x minus 3. Okay, so fully factorised, it's x plus 1 times x minus 3 times 3x plus 2, and that equals 0. Can we please not omit the equal to 0? It's fundamentally the way that we're going to be able to solve the equation. If those three brackets don't equal 0, there is no solution. So please don't drop that off in your solution process. So now that these three things are multiplying together to equal 0, either this thing equals 0, which gives us the solution of x equals negative 1, or this thing equals 0, which gives the solution of x equals 3, or this thing equals 0, which gives x equals negative 2 thirds. And so they are the solutions to that cubic equation. Okay, there's no shortcut to that. That's the process for solving a cubic. Okay. If, it's, if there's no common factors, um, if there's nothing else, you're going to have to use the factor theorem to find a factor, do long division to find the other factor, factorise the quadratic, and then you can use your null factor law. Okay, let's have a look at example two. We want to solve x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x equals zero. Um, so again, if I can solve it by rearrangement, I will, but I can't. Um, if there are any numeric common factors, I want to divide those away, but there are, again, there are none of those. But then I want to factorise, and we remember that the first step of factorisation is to look for common factors, and there is a common factor here, it's x. So if we take out x, we're going to be left with x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals 0. And actually straight away we've just got a quadratic to factorise because of that nice common factor of x. So no long division required here, it won't always be required, but in examples like example 1, it's unavoidable. Factors of negative 5 that add up to positive 2. Okay, so there actually there aren't any factors, so that's not going to factorise further. But that doesn't mean we can't solve it, because we can use the null factor law at this point. We've got two things that multiply together to equal 0, so either that thing equals 0, or this thing equals 0. So this is a quadratic equation that needs to be solved. Now, our first port of call with solving a quadratic is, if we can do it by rearrangement, we will. If we can't, we want to factorise and use the null factor law, but we've already established this doesn't factorise. So if a quadratic doesn't factorise, we then go to quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, so that's going to be plus 20 over 2a, so that's over 2. So negative 2 plus or minus root 24 over 2. Um, root 24 is plus or minus 2 root 6 over 2. And then I've got that nice common factor of 2. So it's negative 1 plus or minus root 6. So our solutions are x equals 0 or x equals negative 1 plus or minus root 6. So still three solutions to that cubic. Okay, example three, solve 216 equals one on x cubed. Okay, so the first thing I'm identifying here is there's only x in one place here. So I don't need any fancy techniques. I can just manipulate this until I get x on its own. We don't like having x in the denominator of a fraction. So the first thing we wanna do is multiply both sides by x cubed to get rid of that. So we've got 216 times x cubed equals one. And now we can focus on getting x on its own. So x is being cubed and then multiplied by 216. So let's divide both sides by 216. And then let's take the cube root of both sides. Okay, cube root of 1 is just 1. And cube root of 216 is 6. 6 cubed is 216. So x equals 1, 6. So only one solution to that particular cubic. So we've talked about cubic function, the different shapes we can get. It's quite possible 
for a cubic function to have just one solution if it's shaped like this. It's actually possible for it to have just one solution even when it's got two turning points. So it's possible to have one solution, it's possible to have three solutions like we saw in the previous one. It would also be possible to have two solutions, okay, if that happened or, or that happened. Um, so um, it's not possible, however, to have zero solutions because it's always going to start down and finish up or if it's reflected in the x-axis, start up and finish down. And at some point, it's to get from one end to the other, it's got to cross over the x-axis somewhere. So it can't have zero solutions, but we can have one, two or three solutions to a cubic equation. Okay, so x equals one-sixth is our solution to example three. All right, and finally, let's have a look at example four. x squared minus 7x equals 9 on x minus 15. Okay definitely can't be solved by rearrangement. There's three x's all over the place and they're not like terms, so we're not going to be able to do that. We want to then solve by using factorization and the null factor law, but the first thing I'm not liking is the fraction. Let's get rid of that before we even think about any other processes. So if we multiply everything by x, we would get rid of that fraction. So this is going to give us x cubed minus 7x squared equals 9 minus 15x. Okay, so now we can get everything on the one side, make one side zero. Let's keep everything in order. x cubed minus 7x squared plus 15x and minus 9 equals 0. Okay, so no common factors. Um, and so we're going to need to find a factor. So let's do p of 1 is 1 minus 7 plus 15 minus 9. Uh, 1 minus 7 is negative 6, minus 9 is negative 15, which is going to be balanced out by the positive 15, so that does equal 0. And so therefore x minus 1 is a factor. Okay, And then we want to divide that to find the other factors. It's worth noting, if you haven't got a lot of factors here, you could actually just continue to do the factor theorem until you identify all three factors. But it again assumes that um, the other factors, all three factors are nice, neat x minus k factors. But it is possible to do it that way as well. Um, okay, so x minus 1 is a factor, and so we're going to divide that in to x cubed minus 7x squared plus 15x minus 9. All right, again, watch an older video if you need this described in more detail. But let's just do it quickly. What do you multiply x by to get x cubed? That will be x squared. Multiplying x squared by x minus 1 and subtracting negative 7 minus minus 1 is negative 7 plus 1, so negative 6x squared. And bring down our next term and repeat. What do you multiply x by to get negative 6x squared? That will be minus 6x. Multiplying minus 6x by x minus 1 and subtracting and then bring down our final term. What do we need to multiply x by to get 9x? That will be 9 and multiplying 9 by x minus 1 does indeed confirm 0 remainder so x minus 1 is a factor. Okay so now we know our equation is x minus 1 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. Let's factorize that quadratic further if we can and it will in this case. Factors of 9 that add up to negative 6 it's negative 3 and negative 3, so that's actually a perfect square. It's x minus 3 all squared. And so therefore, null factor law tells us that either x minus 1 has to equal 0, and so x equals 1, or x minus 3 will have to equal 0, and so x equals 3. So just two solutions to that particular cubic equation. Okay, some practice of solving equations to be done here in exercise 6D.